Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about Pini di Roma, Respighi's The Pines of Rome. This is the Toscanini recording. Gives you a hint which one I'm going to talk about first, right? We'll get back to that in a minute. Now, The Pines of Rome is part of a trilogy. The Pines of Rome, The Fountains of Rome, and Roman Festivals. Not Roman Holiday. That's a movie. Don't get them confused. Anyway, these three tone poems are total orchestral blockbusters. The pines and the fountains used to come coupled together a lot on recordings because they fit nicely. Roman festivals is kind of noisy and a little bit later and some people think it's vulgar and tacky, which is what makes it great, by the way. And so it's done less frequently. Now, you would think that someone who does one does all three, you know, equally well. Not necessarily. There are some great recordings that include all three. And we're going to talk about some of those too, but there are also wonderful singleton performances. Now, the trick with this piece is not just the fact that you need to have a recording of Nightingale number R147 or whatever it is, the sound effects record that comes with the orchestral parts, so that you have a bird going <whistles> at the end of the uh, third part, right? You need to also have really virtuosic playing and a lot of extra brass and tons of percussion. Yes. I mean, I played this piece several times and it won particularly memorable performance. You know, community orchestras usually have problems getting string sections. And I was playing in this really nice community orchestra that had a very, very enthusiastic public support. And we played in a church and they always had trouble getting a full string section. And so for this concert, we were doing the Pines of Rome. We had the full quantity of winds and brass and percussion. And, you know, all the wind and brass people, they love to show up for pieces like this because they don't get to play them that often, right? And they're exciting and fun to do. And so they also played Strauss's The Happy Workshop, that wind serenade that goes on for 40 interminable minutes. And the Pines of Rome, and there was something else on the program. I don't remember what because I wasn't in it. Therefore, it didn't matter. So we're doing the Pines of Rome with the full complement of everybody, except for like three firsts, three second violins, two violas, one cello, two thirds of a double bass. I mean, it was a little bit out of balance, but we didn't care. We were just banging and smashing. And oh yes, we had an organ. And the organ console was right next to me, the Tam Tamist, of course, and I played some other things as well um, during the other parts. But at the end, I was playing the Tam Tam. And, you know, we're screaming and yelling and the brass are shrieking and I'm banging the crap out of the Tam Tam. And the conductor does the great final chords with the organ and everything's going. And it's, you know, bomb, bomb, crash. I went and everything went, ta-da! The conductor gives the cutoff and the organ doesn't cut off. And we all stopped and looked around and the organ is still going. And the organist looks up with like horror on his face and his hands aren't on the console. And this chord is still going. And he starts pushing knobs and pulling things and 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 the and the thing is still going. And then and then I noticed because it was next to me that on the side of the console is this enormous electrical conduit, you know, that attaches the, the console to the actual pipe you know, the works of the organ, which are spread out all around the church. And so I go up to it and I just heave it out and the whole thing goes. And that was the end of the Pines of Rome. We got a standing ovation. Everybody was thrilled. Anyway, so there have been many, many recordings of the Pines of Rome. And I'm going to talk with you about quite a few um, and a couple that are no longer available, but I have to mention. One is Rudolf Kempe with the Royal Philharmonic that was available on Chesky Records. I think originally it was like a Reader's Digest disc or something like that, one of those, part of that series. I don't know if you can still find it. It was spectacular, and it's still one of the great ones if you can find it. Also, the new recording of the whole trilogy with Joanne Folletta and the Baltimore, uh, Baltimore, strike that, the Buffalo Philharmonic 
on, on Naxos is absolutely first rate. It's a great recording of all three of them. And I reviewed it and you can see my review on classicstoday.com. And I really recommend it very, very highly, especially because that disc starts with Festa Romana and it ends with the Pines. And they really, really do a great final march. I mean, you know, the Pines lives or dies on the success of that final march, which actually has a lot going on in it percussively. I mean, with the bass drum pounding and the timpani pounding and the Tam Tam crashing and cymbals and, and the organ, there's, you know, and the brass and it's antiphonal. And, you know, it's very, very hard to record well. But let's talk about some of the more successful performances. There's also a lot of poetry in the piece, too. Do we care about the poetry? Well, some people care more than others. I care. Honestly, I care. Toscanini. I mean, he knew Respighi. This was his music. This was his repertoire. He recorded all three in what was for him and for that day. Really, really good sound. There's a wonderful story about how during the recording sessions, the engineers were saying to Toscanini, you know, you're playing too loudly. It's going, it's going to, you know, damage the, the recording equipment. And Toscanini turned around and screamed at them, damn your machines! He didn't care. And thank God he didn't care. These are great. They're just great. They're exciting as hell and fabulous sounding. There are a couple older ones also, aside from the Kempa. Here's one of the big surprises. This is Karyan with the Philharmonia. This was one of those recordings where everything went right. The sound is great. The playing is great. It, again, it's, it's an amazing recording technically, just gorgeous technically. And it's like 10,000 times better than his later version with the Berlin Philharmonic, not just as a performance, but also sonically. I mean, the Berlin Philharmonic one is kind of mushy, you know, sonically. And at the end, the march is just this sort of congealed mess of sonority. But this, this is the real deal. So if you want to hear Karyan do Respighi and really well, Philharmonia, this is the one, the Philharmonia. You can get it, it's in one of those Karyan EMI boxes with the Karyan edition and all that. It, if you can get it separately, do, I, you know, but that's one of the ones we need to know about. Another surprise, Bernstein. Who knew? He did it not with the Fountains of Rome, but with Festa, Rom Festa Romana, kind of like, just like him to do the two big noisy ones that require the, you know, the maximum amount of, of, of hysteria and, and, you know, energy and verve. And these are, these are terrific performance. And again, surprisingly well recorded for their day. I mean, people knew in those days that, that th these were sonic blockbusters and the engineers had to be on their toes. And quite often they were, even in series that were not otherwise known for having good sound. Now, another sort of one series that people did, I mean, Ormandy, remember Ormandy? He did them twice. Once for Columbia, once for RCA. And I don't think any of them are special. I think they're all just kind of pretty and not very impactful and the sound is not very good and you don't hear everything you're supposed to hear. I don't know. You know, he made a reputation in those works. He was famous for those works and a lot of people learned them from Ormandy. Do not learn them from Ormandy. Now, when Muti came along, he did them in Philadelphia and that's a terrific record of all three tone poems. It's been carved up recently. The Pines was also available coupled to the Prokofiev Romeo and Juliet suites, which makes just tremendous sense, right? I don't know, you know, again, it's one of those discs, where is it and whether it's in discographic limbo or you can find it. The problem with that recording is that the sound was not fabulous for its day. You know, I mean, EMI always had trouble recording Philadelphia and this was, but the performances are thrilling, absolutely first rate. However, this is a surprisingly good one too. Back with the Philharmonia, Jan Pascal Tortelier. The only problem with this one, sonically, is that the cymbals are a bit off mic in the climaxes, which actually happens in real life. I mean, if you've ever seen, you know, uh, performances of incredibly loud music, orchestras can drown out the cymbal players and they kind of do there. I remember when Leonard Bernstein did the Leningrad Symphony with Chicago. The end of it was so loud and he had three sets of cymbals going and you just saw them, but you couldn't hear them. Somehow you knew they were adding something to the general din at the end, <laughs> but you know, it just, it wasn't gonna happen. They actually need some engineering help 
at the end of this piece, if it's really as loud as it's supposed to be. Next, this is a fabulous recording and performance. Eduardo Mata with uh, Dallas Symphony. And this is an interesting coupling because you get festivals and Brazilian impressions, not the fountains. Now, Mata, as I always said, was an absolute master at French, Italian, Spanish, you know, Mediterranean civilization music. And this is no exception. It's an absolutely thrilling performance in really, really terrific sound. I mean, if you have to just go for the engineering, excuse me, pardon me, there we go. If you have to go for the engineering, I would definitely give that one serious consideration. Also for the engineering, and another fantastic performance, and a new one, John Neschling with the Sao Paulo Symphony Orchestra on BIS. This is a tremendously well-recorded, very, very, very exciting disc. And for if you're looking for modern engineering, this is an SACD, if you like SACDs, and you want to have, you know, really terrific modern sound. Here you go, Neschling and Sao Paulo. Now, this is a real surprise. I don't even know if you can find this easily. This is the United States Marine Band conducted by Colonel John R. Bourgeois doing the Pines of Rome. This is the president's own United States Marine Band, director's choice. These discs are hard to find. This was These were issued on Musical Heritage Society. I'm not sure if they're still around. I was amazed by this performance because not only is it one of the best performances as a performance in terms of recording, sound, playing, it's, it's a Stunner. And you don't miss the strings at all, especially, you know, I mean, the first part, the last part. Yeah, you want to hear some strings, maybe sort of in the third part, you know, the, the night scene there with the bird tweeting along. But otherwise, it makes surprisingly little difference. And my God, this is one of the great performances of the Pines of Rome. I just put it out there so that if you see it, if you can find it, Lots of luck. I mean, these were these recordings were issued specifically by the band, and they controlled them. So I'm not exactly sure what the there's no label specifically. I'm not exactly sure what the the history of it was subsequently, but that is one hell of a Pines of Rome. And finally, last but not least, and the best of all, it has been since the day it came out. Reiner and Chicago. Are you surprised? This was the kind of thing that Reiner in Chicago did better than anybody in their day or later. The playing is unequaled and the living stereo sound, holy moly, it still hasn't been better. It just hasn't been. I mean, the final march, you hear the brass, the bass drum, the tam-tam, the cymbals, the whole thing. It's just glorious in its clarity and impact, it has never been matched. And also at the beginning, the very beginning, I don't know what they did to get this sumptuous sound from the harps and the, you know, everything chattering along, you know how it goes, right? It's, it's just as vivid and colorful as it, it could possibly be. I mean, when I first heard this, actually, I first heard it in a recording that my grandmother owned. It, it just blew me away. So if you want the Pines of Rome with the Fountains of Rome and La Mer, they're all great performances. This whole disc is one of those, you have to have it in your collection or you really can't consider yourself a serious record person um, on any basis. I mean, you must own this. So you're gonna get it anyway. Let's just assume that you're going to get it anyway because you have an absolute obligation to get it anyway. You're gonna get the best ever Pines of Rome, plain and simple. So keep on listening, folks. Thank you.